learning crash course today we are going to see a practical example in Python for um, how to use Python and Scalar and pandas and other stuff together to create a model and um, submit your prediction in Kaggle actually we choose um, a simple um, competition in Kaggle for competing um, first you should go into Kaggle.com and register in that after after that um, in the competition section you will find you will find house prices advanced regression techniques um, actually in, 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 in this session we just want to apply linear regression model to to um, know how to apply that on, on real data um, we will learn other regression techniques like random forest and other things um, in the next sessions so don't worry about that uh, we just want to learn how to predict how to build our model how to manipulate data and other stuff in Python okay so first you should go to the competition section and you should join to house prices competition after that um, you will see some predictions about um, about the competition and after that you should click on data section then you will find the data in here you, you should train you should download the training data and the test data for um, the test data is actually the, the data set that we want to predict the house prices on that okay uh, let me um, a little describe to you what is the data set the data set is actually our goal is to predict house price based on um, based on some features of, of that house um, for example lot area street of that house LA of that house and and so on so we have lots of features for predicting the sale price of, of the house and so in our training data um, we will have some features and the target value which is sale price in, and our test data set is just some um, features for some houses and we want to predict the sale price and after that we should submit our predictions so okay first let me um, sketch you the, um, the general schematic that we want to follow um, so first we need to um, pre-process data pre-process data so it means that at first when we read data um, we should do some pre-processing step maybe um, we actually read this section in, in the next sessions more deeply and profoundly but just for now um, let's say we will see in this in this data set um, some values for some houses are missing for example um, maybe for a house um, we don't know the street okay we we, we know all of the other things but uh, but the street um, but just the street so in this case um, we should do something with, with this missing value okay so handling these missing values in pre-processing a step or changing um, or transforming somehow input values and output values for example you you maybe you um, subtract the mean of the data set from uh, from the training data um, we will see actually um, it has some benefits theoretically in, in the training of our model but um, for just now um, think of that as a block in, in, in 
building a machine learning paradigm. So we have pre-processing data. Then after that, we will need a machine learning model. Today we, we, we want to um, implement linear regression model. So our model is linear regression and yeah that's it and then gets output okay and you should note that when you um, apply some pre-processing on the, on the training data set when you want to get the prediction on on test data set you should um, You should pre-process the test data set with, with this transformation before you pass the test data set to your machine learning model. This is so important. For example, when you um, subtract the mean data set from your training data set, you should um, do the same thing with test data set, okay? With, with this mean and or um, variance or anything else in, in this phase. Okay, you should do the exact same transformation with your test data set and pass it to, to your model to get the right prediction. Okay, let's say to some coding. So, so I downloaded this um, data sets. This is train.csv and test.csv. You, you could open that with Microsoft um, Excel or anything else. You could see that um, there are some some columns. These columns actually are the features of our data sets and and the last column is the target um, is the target value which is the output of our model. And in the training data set we have the sale price. But if you open the test data set you could see that um, we don't have sale price because this is test okay so just kaggle.com have that and and we don't have access to that and kaggle um, for um, evaluating our model has some test values and but um, it hides it hides uh, them from us to test our and evaluate our model okay okay Today I, I want to um, introduce you another cool um, ID for writing your codes in Python. Um, if you want, you, you, you could use PyCharm, but there is another cool um, ID for Python. It is called Jupyter. Um, you could install it with, with just pip. Okay, if you install that, then you could create a notebook in that. And, okay, it opens um, a web page for you, which is on your local um, machine. Then you should create a new Python tree or anything else if you want to develop something like that. And because I developed um, already um, the code in here, I will open this. Okay, the cool thing about this ID is that we can section, uh, we can run our code section by section. As you, as you could see, I created some different sections we, we call each section a cell so I created some cells and run let's um, I could run that and get the output of of that cell here so it is so cool about Jupyter but if you don't want to use that you you, you could use PyCharm both of them are okay this is maybe it is better for some sometimes you want to visualize some things repetitively or 
um, for um, you know educational purpose it is so better to use Jupiter okay at first um, as I mentioned in in previous videos one of the packages to work with data sets and CSV data sets are is pandas so first you 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 need to install pandas with just pip so after installing that so we import pandas as pd as you remember it as um, could make pandas simpler for for writing as you could see in here instead of using pandas I just use PD okay um, then we import matplotlib.py plot to um, plot some of our data and also we need um, numpy and for manipulating matrices and this kind of things then from scalar we need to import a function train test split we we will see that this function help us to um, split our training data to training and validation data set to validate our model to prevent overfitting as you remembered we need to um, have three part so let me um, tell you in here currently we have training data and test data but um, for, for training data we, we know the output values but for 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 the test at CSV we don't know the output values so for prevent overfitting and, and validating our model we should um, split our training data set to training and validation okay and train test to split do the do this for can, can do this for us for example we, we could say that okay um, put 70% for training and 30% for validation okay and as you could see in here we will use the style of ggplot ggplot is actually a style of plotting with matplotlib if, if you don't use that both um, again it is okay but um, for those who will um, work with R um, if you know what is R um, ggplot package is very um, popular in, in, in that case okay anyway let's continue so first we should um, read the data set from our system as you could see here this is trained at CSV so for um, reading that pandas ha is, has a very cool method that is read CSV and you, you just need to pass the, um, the directory of the training data set um, um, and your CSV data set to, to that then it will read it automatically so it is so cool that we we can read the data set in just one line with pandas um, method okay then we will read um, test data set after that um, it is very common to to see we want to see some of some of our data set um, some of the um, data in here okay as you could see in here um, we could use any number let's say 10 to see 10 number of data in our data set okay so these are the features and 
the last column is sale price of, of the house okay then we will print training data set the shape to to know how much data we have as you could see in here um, we will have um, 1460 um, data or entries and um, and it has 81 columns okay so the number of features is the last column is price so it is not feature and the first column is ID and it is not actually a feature because it's just one two three four it is not related to to, the, to our prediction okay so we have 79 um, features okay in other word um, our feature data set has 79 elements so we we are in 79 dimensional space so it is so cool to know that okay and the target value is sale price so we with describe method we, we could um, actually describe some um, some features of our output value as, as you could see here um, this is the number of our entries which is count this is the um, average or mean value of, of the sale price and the standard deviation and so on okay and for better intuition maybe we want to um, see the um, histogram of our training data set output values which is sale price so we could use training data set dot sale price and plot the histogram of that with plt.hist um, and, and then we put plt.show to show the histogram um, as you could see here um, maybe it is not very obvious but um, we will see that we apply a transformation on, on our output to make it more Gaussian um, so, um, in fact we like our output to have um, some Gaussian distribution um, it makes the classification um, better um, maybe in, in, in the next sessions or in theoretical um, sessions I talk about that but for now just keep in mind that um, we just uh, it is very good to have Gaussian distributions in, in the output or in the input data so in here you could see that it is not completely Gaussian distribution but we could uh, make it um, more Gaussian like with, with taking log from this okay if you take log it, it will be something like this so it is a good thing okay for now just um, take my word that it is a good thing that your output or, or input features um, have have goes in distribution um, in fact if if you think about them a little um, you maybe you you remember that um, most most of our assumption about data are are something like Gaussian and when, when we use maximum likelihood we consider the distribution um, goes in sometimes and, and uh, in fact in most of the times and something like that so yep okay after that we um, extract numeric features because some of some of the features could let me talk about those here 
some of the features could have values like one, two, or something like that. Some of the features could could be some discrete values like um, maybe um, let's say it is a name of city, so it could be um, Toronto, Hamilton, or something like that. So in this case, you, you could just name it one, two or something like and so on but um, here the values are discrete okay so some of your features could have continuous variables like 2.2 or, or etc but some of your features could have discrete values okay so we call these numeric um, features or um, in fact in, in our data set the uh, discrete values are are non-numeric so we first we extract numeric features so as you could see in here we could see um, numeric features and their type in in here okay so these are integers so they are kind of um, this and discrete also but um, they are not um, categorical okay okay just again now um, we are in in now we are in this step and so we are in the step of pre-processing or feature engineering of of our data so so we are we are like to um, discover our features or histogram of them or or something like them to um, apply suitable pre-processing the step or transformation on them like in here first we visualize the histogram and after that uh, we said okay now we could um, transform the output to to have nice um to have nice outputs okay so one of the cool ways that we could use is to get the correlation of our numeric features with the output so as you could see in here we will use the correlation um, method of the pandas to um, calculate the correlation so we calculate the correlation values between output and the features and then sort sort some of them as you could see here the positive correlation between sale price and um, overall overall quality is the first and this is second and so on okay and here are the negative um, correlation values okay okay now for better understanding for further investigation we could um, plot some kind of um, histogram between the overall quality which is the as you could see here which is some kind of most important feature because it, it has the um, the most correlate uh, correlation factor with sale price so um, we could create some kind of table to plot the overall quality and median sale price um, together okay so as you could see um, the overall quality um, has um, direct effect on median of sale price when when you have a better quality that median of sale price is higher so it, it, it makes sense and we could see um, the um, data based on on the second feature okay this is the second feature and this is 
this is the sale price so and and we we took the log from from the output and um, plot them here and for garage area we did the same so it is so important to know that um, these plots are useful when we want to detect outliers outlier removing is very important a step if you want to have um, a good machine learning model um, as, as you could see we have some values in here something these ones these ones and and so on that um, these can actually um, ruin our model and reduce our performance this um, this seems that they are not actual data and they are kind of noise because our data is majorly in here but we have some outlier so we want to remove them okay we call this a step outlier removal okay outlier removing is very important to step and we have lots of different um, actually methods to do that and um, if, if you are more experienced maybe you um, come up with better ideas to for outlier removing okay but for now we just um, so for for removing these um, for, for removing these we could um, keep just the garage area below um, 1200 so as you could see in here we just um, slice our training data set then um, we again um, plot um, the garage area and sale price so now you could see that we, we don't have much outlier in here okay after that we we want to count the missing values we, we talked about them um, some features could be um, could have empty entry as you could see in here for example we have nan for for this feature okay and for this feature some of the entries has nan but some of them are are not so okay so we want to um, extract those entries okay so we will count them and and print them to to know so as you could see in here in in 1449 for pool qc we have null count and and so on so we saw uh, our um, numeric features um, values and now we want to um, somehow of description of categoricals um, feature okay categorical feature so we select the categorical features from from our training data set and in the same way we describe them now as you could see we for each feature we have the, we have the count of them the unique values so in 1455 we have these features in the entries and um, it it has five different values and the most frequent one is rl okay and the number of this category is 1147 okay and and so on now now let's say for street we could convert that feature to um to numeric feature with one hot encoding so um we create a um, dummy variable named um, encoded a street or anything else that you want and we drop this this feature so after dropping that just note that street has two has two different values um, pave and 
other thing okay for pay we have one and for the other class we have six okay and so we use encoded a street instead of a street okay now okay for handling the um, missing values we, we use interpolate as you could see interpolate um, actually use the average value for 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 that feature and assign the average value to the, to the missing feature okay so if if we have some entries in here let's say they are something this is the first one this is the second one is and this is the third one and let's say the second feature is missing in the first entry so in this case we will take the average of of the remaining um, values of the remaining entries for, for the second feature and put the average value instead of the missing value okay so interpolate do this then if you calculate the number of um, NAND value we, we don't have anything after that now we engineered our features okay so we just need to create the data for for machine learning model that is linear regression model so for the output we use the logarithmic transform to make it some kind of Gaussian so as you could see we get um, log from training data set and and for the input data set and for the input data um, we should drop sale price because this is the output variable it is not the feature um, and the id also is not feature it is just a counter for um, which entry is for which data okay so we so we drop those from train.csv after that for um, validating our model we use train test split method from scalar as you could see we pass um, the data the input data which is the features and the output value which is y and and this is a random state that um, that takes you um, same result after each run because if you change this um, the way of um, splitting for train and test data set will change so different in different interiors will will be saved for test phase and different um, interiors will be saved for for training so if, if you if you want to um, get same result in in each run you could set that it could be 42 it could be anything actually it is not a need to be 42 okay it is it's called seed okay and test size which um, which shows the percentage that you want to keep for for the test or validation phase okay in here um, we kept um, 30% for test phase or validation phase and 70% for training um, phase just please don't confuse don't be confused about the training and testing with the actual test okay in here we call the validation of our model test um, because we don't um, fine-tune our model with validation data set so we we call those tests but the actual test data set is 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 this train.csv that we don't have the output values for that so we we, we don't have output values or y tests for for the output um, 
for the output of, of the test CSV but so so in here X test and Y test is actually X validation and Y validation so I, I hope it is not confusing for for you but if it is don't worry it will be more clear in the next sessions okay now we will import linear model from scalar and a metric minus squared error for for um, getting the performance our our model on test data okay now we will create a linear regression model and fit our model on, on the training data okay after that you could um, print the score on on the validation data set okay um, this score which is R to a score is actually um, we, we haven't talked about it but it is a score that tells us how much data are close to to the fitted line okay but but in this competition um rms a kagel use rms e and rms e or root mean a square is, is more important so you will see that we print also root mean a square in here okay and and also plot those values in here okay so um, these are the actual price which is y test and these are the predicted price which is the um, prediction of the model um, in here if actually if you have a perfect model you should have x is equal to y because the actual price should be equal with, with your predicted price in fact your machine learning model should should um, exactly predict the actual price so it could be y is equal to x line okay it is the perfect it is a perfect model but as you could see we, we don't have a perfect model okay now we trained our model and validate that now we want to submit our final um, prediction on the test that CSV on the test data set. Just again note that the test data set is, is not this Y test and X test, okay? It is the test that CSV. So we just create a data frame. Data frame in, in, in Panda is something like this, it's just a table. So um, it is a more general thing, but you could um, think of that as a table for now. Just then it has an ID. So after that, we predict um, based on the features, we predict um, the output values for that. As you could see, we, we dropped the ID values because it is not the features, the input features for, for the model. So we, we get the prediction of our model. And after that, we um, take the exponent from, from the predictions because the output of our model is now is the log of output value. Because in, in the training phase, we get um the logarithm from from the training data so our output of machine learning model is actually um taken log of of the actual value so we should use if if we want to get the actual value after that we we should take the exponent from from the output of model okay so we took the exponent from the predictions and so we, you could see that these are the um, prediction of our of our model and 
um, these are the exponents from from the predictions okay after that you want to save that as CSV so you just save it with two CSV okay and um, in here you could click on submit prediction and click on upload files and from here you could um, click on your output files and then click on make submission and go to leaderboard to know your um, position okay yeah that's it so now you know how to um, create a model pre-process data and uh, and submit your um, machine learning model and, and the output values in Kaggle um, just note that we have not talked uh, about lots of models we could um, improve the performance of, of the model with different machine learning models for now we just know about linear regression model but we have lots of other models to to use for for this competition or any other competition and also we have not talked about pre-processing data yet so much and so we will talk about this also later but I hope that in this lesson now you will get the understanding of how to use Python to um, to join a competition in, in Kaggle or actually use pandas and other packages in, in Python for um, creating a machine learning model and I, I save this we, we call this notebook actually so in, in Jupyter I, I save this as as Kaggle rig and I, I put it in um, Slack channel you could um, use that and generate step by step um, by running different cells um, yourself okay um, I hope that you enjoy from this session hope to see you bye